Hey, North Star, welcome to Digging Deeper, where we help you lock eyes with Jesus and take a step towards Him. Today's scripture reading is Matthew chapter 26, verses 36 through 39. God's word says this. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. And he took with him Peter and two sons of Zebedee and began, and was, began to be grieved and distressed. And he said to them, my soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. Remain here and keep watch with me. And he went a little beyond them and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass for me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Today is the 14th day of Lent, which is a season of self-denial and self-examination as we empty ourselves of the lesser things and fill ourselves with the greater things of the gospel. Well, earlier this week and last week, we looked at portions of the Lord's Prayer. And for the remainder of the week, we are going to look at this passage from Matthew 26, which is our Lord's Prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. This is Jesus praying to the Father. Now, Gethsemane literally means oil press. Now, an oil press would be used to extract oil from the fruit, specifically in a field that was covered with olive trees. And as this fruit w- was, was placed down, the rock would go across it and crush the fruit in order to produce an oil that would be used for a variety of things. Now, that is, it is in this garden of the oil press, as verses 37 and 38 tell us, that Jesus is grieved and distressed. So much so that even in Luke's account, it tells us that Jesus sweats blood. So in a way, Jesus is in the oil press, that he is being crushed by this situation. And what does he do in this place of anguish? But he turns to his father in prayer. And verse 39 tells us that he falls on his face and he prays, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me but not as I will, but as you will. Now, hopefully you're seeing some of the fundamental similarities between this prayer in Matthew 26 and the Lord's prayer in Matthew chapter six. We see that Jesus starts his prayer with my father as the Lord's prayer starts with our father. Jesus says, not my will, but your will. And the Lord's prayer says, your kingdom come, your will be done. This is a real-life example of the Lord's Lord's Prayer being played out. So in verse 39, when Jesus says, Lord, would you allow for this cup to pass from me? What's he talking about here? Now, the cup alludes to the wrath of God that Jesus would experience in the form of suffering and death for us. You can see more about the cup in Psalm 11, um, Psalm 75, and Psalm 51. But as a result, Jesus is asking that this cup would pass from him. Yet even as Jesus asks for this provision, he qualifies it by submitting his will ultimately to the Father. So we should look to this passage with Jesus as our example, as always, that we come with a request, but ultimately we bow our will to the Father, that we too should always have a posture of not my will, but your will be done, O Lord. Now, there is a a quick excursus that I want to talk about for us here in this passage, as there is some complex Trinitarian theology at play, particularly that Jesus, the Son incarnate, who's fully God and fully man, submits his will to the Father, who is also fully God. Now, does this make Jesus less God? Does this mean that there's a hierarchy of importance within the Trinity? Does that mean that Jesus and the Father have different wills? Well, no, no, and no. Because we know that the triune God, the Father, Son, and Spirit, they're co-eternal and co-equal. That They're the same in substance, equal in power and glory. But in this passage, we do see the dual nature of Jesus on display, that he is fully God as well as fully man. Thus, we see that Jesus in his humanity submits his will to the Father. In the same way that Jesus makes statements such as, no one knows about the day or the hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Now, how can this be possible? Jesus is fully God. How does he not know? But here we see again, it's Jesus in his humanity does not know, but in his divinity, he knows all. 
So we see that the Father, Son, and Spirit, the triune God, are always working together. Let's pray. Our Father, on this 14th day of Lent, we thank you, Jesus, that you have restored all things that have been lost to us because of Satan and the fall. And Lord, we thank you that no matter what comes our way in this world, that you will be victorious, whether now or in eternity, and we'll experience eternal life with you. And Father, we pray this now through the Son and by the Spirit. Amen.